Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Truth Prevails. Good brother Ramsey here with me with another week. Where we're going through these watchtowers and dissecting them you know, piece by piece so we can, you know, help these witnesses see what areas they need to look into. So I hope everyone's been liking this series and we're back with another week. The name of the article is How Do You View the Fields? And this was a, you know, interesting article because, or watchtower for this week, because there was a lot of, um, I agreed with a lot of it, but then there's certain things obviously we're going to disagree because, you know, I just feel like Satan, he, he gives you some truth, but then he sprinkles a little bit of falsehood in it. So how, how did you feel about this week's article? <clears throat> Uh, I felt uh, very much uh, like how you felt, uh, heard a lot of good things that are very good for evangelism. Uh, and at the same time, uh, but the it's the message that, that's the issue. But as far as the approach uh, to sharing, I think a lot of it rings true. Um, and so that's, uh, there was a, a lot of uh, good things thinking about uh, to uh, with regard to reaching people. But the question is uh, definitely what is our motives and what is uh, what is fueling our desire to proclaim the, proclaim the the good news, right? Yeah, because a lot of it is like you wouldn't know the kind of background message. You have to know what they preach. And the thing is, it's, they're making it seem as it's, it's genuine, but it's kind of like they're still being forced to be out there. So a lot of them, I wonder how many people would actually go if they wasn't required to go. Right. If they really had the option, I wonder how many would actually be there. And that's the thing. It, uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting how... how uh, yeah, how that goes. It's like, wow, you know, if, if it was not a, um, I mean, for us, it's, it's something that we enjoy, right? We, we enjoy to share the good news with uh, somebody we desire to see souls saved and lives changed. And we, we believe that that message that we share does transform people's hearts and lives. And if it doesn't, then we're, our preaching is in vain. You know, we are, we're, we're preaching for nothing. You know, we're uh, trying to uh, earn our way or something like that. And the message won't do anything for anyone. It won't help them. So, yes, yeah. huge difference. That's the thing. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They think they do. Like you said, so everything they're doing, uh, door to door, staying at the carts, that's all in vain. Yeah. And the thing is, too, I mean, uh, the reason what we're doing it is out of love, you know, out of uh, uh, devotion, you know, that we would want to share this message. And it's bubbling up from within, you know, because God's love has been poured into our hearts when we believed on Christ. So his spirit is within us. And from him, uh, he's making his appeal through us. So it's uh, God stirring us up from within and uh then we have the desire to go and share uh, and the, it says like it's in scripture the aim of our charge is love and uh we're supposed to you know we are to speak the truth in love with our neighbor if, if love is not the the driving force then uh we are speaking we're basically speaking into the air right, right. we're just trying to um trying to get people to agree with us but not with uh not in spirit and not in truth mm -hmm. and that's that's the big difference all right let's get into this article i guess like the main some summarization of this article is kind of teaching them and preparing them how to build people out and I guess basically how to get the best response that they can from people um, to make them join. And I was watching another video with a brother that does this. 
but he, he like, sp- specifically deals with their literature and like the changes and stuff. And he's saying that there's been a decline in the people that have been joining, which okay. is great. You know, in, in part two, so they're trying to expand it and, you know, have um, this build the kingdom malls and do it, and they've been having trouble because people haven't been doing the studies and, and haven't been progressing, which is a blessing because it just needs to be shut down, you know. And that's what's like, man, God, it's like, I wish. The only true religion that people had the chance to either join that one religion or not, you know. Mm-hmm. But it, it goes to show you, well, how much will you dig for truth? And if you find out something is not true, what would you do? You know, mm. it really shows your heart. Yeah, because there's some people that know something false and will still stay there. Mm. Yeah. And that's 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 dangerous, you know. It's like you know, if you're accepting a lie, when Jesus said, "You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free," and um, that um, you know that 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 truth is supposed to bring you freedom. So, Amen. yeah. Amen. So I think I had something in, in paragraph two. Okay. Did you? Have- uh, I was just thinking of um, the the scripture that they they use. Lift up your eyes and view the fields that they are white for harvest. Is that how they put it in the uh, New World Translation? And um, yeah. yeah, and just thinking, wow, uh, yeah, we there's definitely uh, harvest of souls that uh, God wants to save and he wants us to view that as wow th- there is so many people that uh need this message and he's sending us out and uh thinking that wow we have the message that will transform their lives and and save them for eternal life and um and that that message uh in mark 1 15 jesus said repent and believe in the gospel uh, believe in the good news, have a change of mind and believe in the good news. And that's the, that message, uh, you know, and how he changes us as he sends us out. Follow me. I mean, I mean, follow Christ and I will make you fishers of men. He said to fishermen, you know, in Matthew 4. So he gives us the examples of what we need to reach people with. But mm-hmm. um, so this, the paragraph says Jesus was a, a apparently referring to a figure of harvest of people consider what had just happened although jews usually had no dealing with samaritans um, jesus had preached to a samaritan woman and she had listened in fact while jews was speaking about fields that were for harvesting and of samaritans who had heard about jesus from the woman were on their way to learn more from him uh, one bible commentary says about this account the eagerness of people um, show that they were like grain ready for harvesting. So the thing is, why that 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 quotation, the commentary, they quote a Christian pastor. Hmm. Come here. So I'm going to show you. It's right here. If you can see my screen. Yes. You see what I'm highlighting. He was speaking, the Samaritans were leaving the town and coming across the fields, told him the eagerness of the people, the Jews, regarded as alien and rejected, showed that they were like grain ready for a harvest. Now, uh, something you always want to do is whenever the watch tower says dot, 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 you always want to look into that because they usually hide it from Oh, Okay. But to then, if I look up, I'm, so this quote is from this website called Enduring Word. And I look up this statement of faith, and this guy, he believes in the Trinity. Interesting. <laughs> I believe there's one living and true God. I believe, in, um, I believe that there's one living and true God, ex- uh, e- eternally existing in three persons, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in power and glory, that this triune God created all, upholds all, and governs all. So it's just like, <laughs> and even four points down, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, the incarnate God, and who was in his incarnation, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So it's like, why are you quoting from Christians? When you feel like Christians don't understand the Bible and your organization is the only people that understand the Bible. And they try to trick, like, they, they don't I put actually, the say, you know, one Bible commentary as if it's coming from inside the organization. Yes. <clears throat> so I actually uh, just looked up that name. Yep. He looked, the name looked familiar. I looked it up and uh, I listened to this man preach before on grace. Like it's Christian grace that he, he preaches on. And uh, I heard him preach. I saw him preach like on a video. Uh, but it's interesting yeah. that they're using that man who's preaching a go the gospel, the Christian gospel, and it's not the gospel, you know, talk, talk grace like a Christian, uh, not as a Jehovah Witness would would um, perceive perceive that. So yeah. that's interesting. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's what it's kind of like Satan throws some truth in there, but it's on you to catch it. Right. It might go right over your head, you know? Yeah. So and then no one will ever look into that, but that's something we can pull up. So as we go to see him on the street, you pull this up. Interesting. And you say, you know, the watch side will quote, where is this from? You don't know. We didn't look into it. You know? Because that's the thing. It's like they don't look into everything when they should be. You know, especially from my outside soul. So yeah, I looked at what kind of caught my eye. Every time you see that dot, 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 always yeah. looking into it. They did that with the Trinity. They made a Trinity pamphlet. And yeah. boy, oh boy, they was quoting people out of context. They was taking half of the quotes. It was bad. Wow, they 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 stopped making it. They won't even hand it out. It's like if you try to have a, a physical copy, it's probably remember we was bidding on that. It's, it would I can only imagine what the price would be right now for one of those. Okay, so paragraph three. It said, if you view people as Jesus did, how will your preaching benefit? It says, what about the people to whom you preach the good news? Do you view them as being like grain that is ripe for harvesting? If so, three things will prove true. First, you will preach with more urgency. A harvest period is limit, limited. There is no time to waste. Second, you'll be happy as you see people respond to the good news. And the Bible says people rejoice in the harvest time. And third, you will see people, you will see each person as a potential disciple. So you will adapt your approach to appeal to his or her interest. Now, something stuck out there for you? It's, uh, it's, um, I love what uh, it says. Yeah, I, lo I love what it says in uh, Matthew 9, 36 uh, in scripture. It says that, um, sorry, my computer's a little slow. Uh, it says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. Like sheep without a shepherd, and uh, to to know that God has you know is gracious and merciful, and mm. He's looking at the crowds in a certain way, and uh, sending us out. Um, but I, when I look at that, I'm like, wow. I mean, all th three of that sounds uh, pretty good. And then, but then I hear the, the third one, and I'm like, wow. And third, you will see each person as a potential disciple, so you will adapt your approach to appeal to his or her interests. Um, I, I can see how we may, um, uh, want to build a bridge, right? Yeah. But we, we, we definitely wouldn't want to change the message. Um, mm -hmm. meaning the gospel is going to be the gospel no matter what. 
uh, so we would definitely want to reach people and uh, but may our, our may our love be genuine and not um, fabricated uh, so that's that's important and um, but the question is for our Jehovah Witness uh, friends uh, do they really look at it this way or is it for them more of a chore uh, like we talked about earlier than uh, uh, that they can't wait for it to be over or is it something that is a, more of a delight to them you know so yeah. that's yeah, uh, right. that's important yeah but I, I definitely appreciated you know I, I look at the first two and I'm like yeah I mean uh, preaching with more urgency you know uh, and the harvest period is a limited time you know there's coming a, a, a day of judgment and we only have so much time we don't know when our last breath will be and maybe we make every day maybe we live it to the full and um, also the second you will see uh, you'll be happy when you see people respond to the good news and that's absolutely a delight you know we, you see that happening um, uh, right then and there. Praise the Lord. If, if it's something that uh, you're able to at least plant the seed and you might not see the result of it till later on. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. like too, to know that God made his appeal through me and, um, you know, get to uh, go forward and claim this gospel. So, yeah, that kind of stuck out, but I didn't know if they meant it as um, like that person as you're talking to him they might join or they might accept the message um hmm. so they might be a potential disciple but but um i want to see if i can play this too because i asked them this because that's not the goal door to door when they come to your door they're not there to to make uh, make have a convert or make a disciple so hold on, let me show you something. This is one of my earlier videos when I started my channel. I gotta just find it. Okay. Aurelia summed up in these two verses that you just had them read. The witness says that he is not at that person's house to make disciples. He is not at that person's house to proselytize him. He is not at that person's house to convert him from one denomination to another. Yet, that's exactly what this scripture says. When Jesus. So that's, and it was, he brought up, um, what is it, Matthew? 28. Yep. And look, I am with you all the days. Until We're supposed to go out, make disciples. That's what right. he, we're supposed to go out and make disciples, and that's the verse that they use to say we have to preach and go the, the day after preaching, go door to door. But then you're gonna hear this witness say, "I'm not there to make disciples." That's so weird. <laughs> yeah. So hold on. That's not what Jesus called us to do. Exactly. So, are you looking for new members for the church? No. Anybody? Anybody? Like, mm -hmm. Anybody can be a part of it. It's like a, a you know, it's a public building. Mm -hmm. You're to members. None of us come as members. We all come at our own. You know, it's not like we have to pay to come or have to join or do anything crazy. We're going there mm -hmm. to serve God, mm -hmm. you know, Jehovah and Jesus, and to show our respect. You know what I mean? And get more mm -hmm. knowledge. We're always learning. We're always bettering ourselves. So this, there's no. It's not. It's not like a lot of other churches. You gotta pay to go, mm -hmm. or you have to do certain things. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. You could come one time, you know, <laughs> and never come never again. again. I mean, we hope that's not the way it would be. Yeah, but that there's no obligation. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah, no yeah, yeah. yeah. So the thing is, too, um, we are when you say um, looking for for new members, uh, it's not. That's not how. Because in the Bible, it's written for everyone, mm -hmm. but not everyone is interested. Yeah, yeah. So 
God, Jehovah, respects us as free moral agents to make up our own decisions. He doesn't force anyone to do anything. Thank, so, thank, you. thank you for that. I love this. <laughs> so, oh, glad you so, yeah, so it's up to us. Mm -hmm. What we want to do, if somebody wants to come and listen and read the Bible, mm -hmm. that's fine. It's up to the individual. Mm -hmm. We are going to people's houses to share uh, the message of hope because you look at the world, you turn the news on, is there any good news? Mm -hmm. No good news. Barely. Mm -hmm. I mean, he created humans. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, uh, we're not like animals. We can enjoy different scenery. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we look at paintings that don't want to eat the same exact thing every yeah. meal of every day. Mm -hmm. We have taste, we can drink different flavors. So when God created us, he put a lot of love behind it because he gave us the ability to enjoy living. Mm -hmm. Or because of his son, see, the Bible, it helps us to see what those things are. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the message that we have. Mm -hmm. We want to show them that. Don't be so down. Life is end. It's up to us. Let them change life. Mm -hmm. Things are better on the horizon. And you know, and in in like are, we are going to oh, and just not, like just teach things their denomination so that we we know we know yeah yeah. So, are you guys prophesizing for people to change their denomination to become part of your denomination? We like are, yeah. we are going to oh, and just not, like just teach the word. Yes, it's. Like I said, we are free moral agents. We are not, we're not trying to change people. We are giving them information. People change themselves. Yeah. yeah. If someone wants. I'm going to stop it there. But they're not there to, to make you change your domination. They're not there to convert you or make you a disciple. What is Matthew 28, 19 to 20 say? That's what you should be there. So, you know, if you come and say a Catholic, well, I would tell you, hey, you might want to reconsider because they do things outside of the Bible. I want you to change your denomination because you ain't a false one. Hmm. But their message is so, it's, for lack of better words, it's cowardly. When, when they are scared to kind of just stand up and, and say that. That's why... You gotta, it's easy to come to someone's door and say, you know, hey, the world's going to be a better place. You know, there's going to be no sickness in, in et cetera. Or to say, hey, you know, we need Jesus as a savior because we all have broken God's law. And you know, we need to be born again. We need to repent. It's an easier conversation is to go with the good stuff. So it's kind of deceiving when that article says that, it says you see each person as a potential disciple because you don't. Because that's not what you're there for. Mm. It, like he said, he said, we're here to like, give out information. They're not there to, to even, like, to, you know I mean, to convert you, which they should be. Yeah, uh, I, I think of scripture where it says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word of Christ. If we hear his words and we believe his words, we're going to be converted. We're going to change. We're going to uh, be transformed. And uh, But it, w it w would require knowing his words and uh, being able to convey his words. And if we're not there to proclaim the gospel... We are not being, we're not doing what God has called us to do. We're not being ambassadors for Christ. Um, and we're not, uh, so God is not making his appeal through us. We're bringing them to a Bible study. Even, I mean, even Christians with the best of intentions, we can, and I think it's a, a very noble thing to invite somebody to church, but God called us to 
um, you know, and so we that's a wonderful thing and we should and that I we can see that in, in a good way as a way of evangelism, but we're having we're counting on someone else to minister to them. We are also called to go to that person and tell them of the love that we have for them through proclaiming this gospel. And uh, if it is nothing, if it's a chore for us, then we the question is, what do we really believe in? Because if it's a radical, life-changing message, we would want our neighbors to know it. We would want to love them enough to tell them, you know, and that's um, pretty powerful. And then then we will be excited to tell our coworkers, our neighbors. Our, we'll be praying for those opportunities to tell um, friends and uh, 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 people from uh, junior high school, high school or wherever, college, you know, people, whoever. We're going to want to tell them. We're going to want those opportunities. We'll be praying for them, you know. Uh, Facebook friends or whoever, you know. Also, something interesting before we go on to four, uh, it says uh, you will adapt your approach to appeal to his or her interests. And uh, I, I love that scripture. I pray it often. Uh, it says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others of greater significance than yourselves, looking not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And mm. so it would be like something that's genuine when we are looking to that person's interests, but with the intent of not to be underhanded, but to really want to seek to connect with that person in a way where, you know, to build a bridge, so to speak, so that we could tell them of the, the love of God through Christ. So, Amen. 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 Good point. Great point. So the next paragraph was four. It says, what will we learn from the Apostle Paul in this article? It says, Jesus did not write off the Samaritans as his followers may have done. Instead, he saw them as potential disciples. Like Jesus didn't know that they would believe. Um, we too need to see the people in our territory as potential disciples of Christ. Apostle Paul set an outstanding, outstanding example for us to follow. And what can we learn from him? In this article, we, we will discuss how one, he uh, knew something about the beliefs of those to whom he preached, and two, discerned the interests, and three, saw them as potential disciples of Jesus. Yeah, that's crazy that first sentence. Um, Jesus didn't see anyone. I, I agree potential disciples and it's crazy because in this same article they say that jesus can read hearts um did jesus view the fields as being ripe for harvesting because he expected that most people will follow him not at all scriptures had foretold that relatively few would put faith in it and jesus had the miraculous ability to read hearts Still, he focused on those who would believe, and he's zealously mm. for everyone. So, how can he see people as potential disciples if he knows their heart already? Mm -hmm. Right. Like they contradict themselves in in, in in the same article. I was going to say in John uh, six sixty four it says, um, actually in John, starting from verse sixty. <clears throat> Uh, scripture says, when many of his disciples heard it, uh, they said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man descend? Uh, I'm sorry. Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. So he he already knew from the beginning because he Jesus is the creator. He knows all things. Yeah. You know. And um, yeah. so he knew who would believe, who would who would not believe. 
Um, so yeah, I had an elder tell me yesterday that Jesus didn't know Judas was going to betray him. That's not what the scripture says. Over and over. <laughs> Over and over, there's multiple yeah. places that, that will say that, but they can't have a God that knows that. It's kind of they God has to be going in times instead. Um, even in when it talks about Jesus knowing um, people's hearts, and it says that their potential uh, disciples, even says about Jehovah, um, the Father, it says Jehovah sees these potential disciples as precious things. So. He doesn't even know. And it says, if we see people wow. as Jehovah and Jesus do, we learn about their backgrounds and interests. That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. It's interesting. Um, it says somewhere in Acts. So bear with me. It says this in Acts chapter... <clears throat> Acts chapter... Verse four. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. So it was something that, that was, as the preachers, a foreknowledge of God. So mm. it was to those whom he foreknew, also predestined to be to the image of his son. Amen. And those uh, whom he called, he also justified. You know, and you know how it goes. It's just interesting, you know, that that is the case. It's like, wow, he foreknew, he ordained them, and those who were ordained, they believed. You know, um, amen. So that's that's pretty interesting. You know, about it because it's like, wow, it wasn't something that God was confused about. God didn't know. Who was going to come or who was going to believe you know uh he knew he foreknew us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him so if he foreknew us before the foundation of the world that means wow before even adam and eve you know um yeah. he foreknew us and so um he didn't learn anything from us you know he's the all-knowing god you know no things you know so that's pretty amazing. Um, in paragraph four, also, it says in, in the third sentence, it says, we need to see the people in our territory as potential disciples of Christ. So the, the key thing I want to point out here is territory. I noticed that too, the word territory. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a territory. They give a certain area that you kind of have to work. And I believe an elder says, he told me that I think you have like three months to work the area. And I had found some, some background information. Someone made an app for them to help. And this is called j -Woo Territory. So it's like a management app that they can use. And he says, you know, I created this program to help my congregation's territory. Um, then realize that many of the congregations might benefit from it. It's a it's an app to help the territory servants manage territory more effectively. It will keep track of congregation territory and allow you to identify which territories should be given out next, which are overdue, which have not been worked in a year. It will also keep track of do not calls and run various principal reports. So, you know, if this was for the right reason. It would be nice to keep track, but so if someone comes to your house and you're a witness, you can say, put me on a do not call list. So you can call the Kingdom Hall and say, put me on this list. So this is kind of a form that you can fill out. They would have to fill out if they come to your house. So they put the type and they fill out all, all this information. But over to the right is something interesting. It says sex offender. Huh. So they'll put you on a do not call list if you're a sex offender. So it's like, well, you know, everyone needs forgiveness. You never know how someone's heart changed. You know, right. you obviously you should be cautious, but you shouldn't withhold just because of their past. Oh, that was it. I'm just saying it doesn't save good people, you know? 
and save sinners. Mm -hmm. Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost, Paul said. So here's just a screenshot of what it kind of looks like. You add that territory, you edit it, and you can have someone like, they check in, they kind of say, well, someone is overdue, someone hasn't been here for a while. So, excuse me, they keep, they keep back of the area they go to. They, see, now it goes back to the motive. Why are you doing it? If this is for the right reason, and people are actually doing this on their own, then, you know, I would understand it. But we know the real reason behind it when it's required. And then let me see something. I want to show you something else. So it kind of just tells you what it can do. It's ability to search it by publisher. I guess it's like member. You can print out a report. You can do not cause. You can add territory. So it's like. You know. Yeah. It's, uh, also, when I think of um, uh, territory, the word, even the word territory, uh, you know, I think of, um, I went and I looked up uh, the definition and I came up with talking about uh, territory. Uh, Oh, yeah, area yeah. for which a person is responsible as a representative or agent uh, a salesperson's territory and um, just thinking about it as more of like a sphere of influence as far as um, people that you know family friends uh, neighbors um, co-workers and people that you may come in contact with in a day that you may be able to share the good news with, uh, with them yeah, man, because it's all the sales. It's kind of like a sales job. Yes, exactly. For the Jehovah Witness, it certainly seems that way. Okay, so this is the X7, uh, let me paragraph seven. Um, Paul did not present his message to the Gentiles in Athens in the same way he presented it to the Jews in the synagogue. Paul likened, uh, likely asked himself, what do these people in Athens believe? He carefully observed his surroundings and took note of people's um, religious customs. Next, Paul searched for common ground between their form of worship and the truth in the scriptures. As a Jewish Christian, he realized that pagan Greeks you know, worship the, the true God of Jews and Christians, says one Bible commentator. But he tries to show that the God whom he proclaims is in reality no stranger to the at the end. So once again, they say one Bible commentator. So I had to look into that when they pulled the first one out of context and, and quoted the Christian. So I found that they was quoting this Joseph Fitzmaier. I hope I didn't butcher that, but um, he was a Catholic biblical scholar. So it's, it's like why first you quote a Christian pastor from his website, and now you're quoting a, a Catholic scholar? It's just interesting that they're quoting of people who, uh, both those people, would assume, uh, uh, David Guzik, the first person that you showed, he believes in the Trinity. It's yeah. on the statement of faith, right? And a, I believe Roman Catholics, Jesuit priests, they believe, I believe in the Trinity as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it, the Jehovah, well, Roman Catholics do, I believe. So yeah. it's like interesting that they would use people who believe, believe in something they they don't, and they're quoting them. Uh, and, you know, them as Bible com commentators and, uh, you know, giving them credit. So uh, that's interesting, but without, without saying who they are, right? So that people right. can look them up for themselves, but... Giving them credit for less, and the, the, the calling them Bible commentator. So. Amen. And that's the thing. Remember, we looked at they don't they don't encourage higher education. So how can someone go out and study these scriptures and go to these colleges when they don't want you to do that? Yeah. So they can't have no one. And why would they? Why would they be looking at them themselves? These people, right? If they're saying only use watchtower material or material from, uh, yeah, watchtower, why, why would they use something else? I, yes, um, in 
in number nine. Yeah. So it says, what common ground can you find with a religious person? And uh, what it says, what subjects might you discuss with a religious person? Try to find common ground. He may worship only one God. He may recognize Jesus as the savior of humankind. Or he may believe that we are living in a time of wickedness that will soon end. Based on beliefs you have in common, present the Bible's message in a way that is appealing to that person. And um, and so it's just interesting because it says, you know, you know, you look at it, it says, well, I think the hope uh, is if anyone is a religious person, the common ground would be that we know that uh, uh, we know about that person's religion and love, right? Which would, Lord willing, build a bridge uh, to, to engage that person. Um, and if they say they believe, but if they say if they believe in Jesus, uh, our question should be, what Jesus, right? For Scripture teaches um, in First John chapter four, verse one: "Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world." And in Galatians one uh, six through nine, it says, "I am astonished that you are." So quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one we the one you received, let him be accursed. So it's interesting that the apostle uh, is telling people, hey, if, if it's not the gospel that you know that you find here, you know that you see in the word, or that you see that you've heard from us, you know that person is to be accursed. So very uh, cautious that we should be as far as you know, person should be if some if someone's proclaiming a Jesus that is not. Uh, you know, instead of the, of the Holy Scripture, that's why we need to know the Word, so that we may make sure. What am I hearing? You know, and um, is it the the gospel that Paul preached? And if it's right. not, then uh, right. we're listening to a false gospel, and we are to test the spirits. Hey, is this person? Uh, what spirit is this person be uh, led by? Is it by the Holy Spirit? Um, if it's not by the Holy Spirit, this person is, um, he, he's, he's not going to pass the test. So she's not going to pass the test. So. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, it, and it goes to show that they're scared to touch those hard, mm -hmm. those hard topics because they want it to come. Yeah. With and, but the great thing is if, is if we know then, uh, and knowing what that person believes, we can, we can go straight to the heart of the matter and we can not have to go through a lot of pre preliminary stuff if we know that person's religion we can minister to that person right where they need it right mm -hmm. and we can we can sometimes a conversation might go only go so deep because we only know so much and we're dealing with maybe a lot of surface things that a person would if they didn't really know their the other person's faith but when you know that person's faith you can you can go deeper to where they need to hear something because you're knowledgeable of the jehovah witnesses you're able to speak to them on topics that are hitting right where they they need it and will minister to their hearts in a deeper way not that it's not deep with someone who's just meeting that person letter of the spirit but once you've really studied that person's religion because you of love for those people you're going to be able to go deep in a in a way that god will that god's going to go deep in them right as he uses you because you you know you know about them and so this is not uh a an exercise in futility this is not something that's going to be fruitless or that's not going to be very fruitful in the lives of Jehovah Witnesses, right? So that's really awesome. In paragraph 10, I kind of wanted to, it's somewhere, it's midway. Um, if you could see my screen, you could see my screen? Uh, 
Um, yes. Yeah, it says, and it, it says a missionary brother in Argentina notes that some people say that they believe in the Trinity, but they may not actually believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God. Knowing that makes it much easier to find common ground with the person, he says. So try to find out what people really believe. Then, like Paul, you can become all things to people of all sorts. So the first thing is, if they don't believe, if they don't believe the basic doctrine, if they don't know the doctrine, how can you say they believe it? You know, if someone doesn't believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit when they never believed in the Trinity. Then, you know, that's why it's important to know what you believe yourself. Right. You join something. So his the statement didn't make sense. Hmm. And then they're taking this verse, First Corinthians nine twenty three, out of context. Because that verse says, For though I am free from all people, I have made myself the slave to all, so that I may gain as many people as possible. To the Jews, I became a Jew as a Jew in order to gain Jews. To those under the law, I became as under, under the law, though I myself am not under law, in order to gain those under law. To those without law, I became as without law, although I am not without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, in order to gain those without law. To the weak, I became weak in order to gain the weak. I have become all things to people of all sorts so that I might, by um, all possible means, save some. But I do the, these, I do all things for the sake of the good news in order to share with others. So he's saying he's doing this by just finding out what someone believes. That's not becoming all people. You know, Paul was in the synagogues trying to preach to the Jew to the Jews so they can hear the gospel. You know, he was acting as if he was under the law to still commingle with those people. Hmm. That's nothing what they're describing here by asking them questions and understanding what they believe in. That's no, that's just witnessing. You're not going into their church, going to their homes for Bible studies that actually go into deep what they believe to become like them, to then witness to them. You want to hear the kind of surface level, but they're taking out of ground. I, I hear what they're trying to say, but it was always doing a lot more than what they're doing. Yeah. Well, I, I look at it, I look at it like this. I, I see it as, yeah, before I was a, a Christian, I called myself a Christian, you know, I um, maybe wore a cross around my neck and all of that. And, um, but it was more jewelry. It was jewelry for me, you know, more than anything else. I couldn't tell you why Christ died on the cross, but I said, hey, I believe in Jesus, you know, but until I truly heard the truth, that's when, uh, and, and truly, uh, you know, read the Bible myself, and uh, that's how God brought me to faith, you know, uh, so without that, it was just, you know, just a fluff, you know, so I, yeah, I, I say I, I, I believe that, but it, it didn't go... Uh, further than that, but um, yeah, with Paul, I, I was thinking, wow, yeah, becoming all things to all people, uh, just wanting to really, you know, uh, somehow reach them through his the things that he, uh, you know, trying to relate with them where, right where they're at, uh, to, but with the focus always being on the gospel. And uh, I love what Paul said. He says, "I have desired." to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And to know that that was his heart, that was the beat of his heart was the gospel. And he was, uh, even though he would try to relate with people where they're at from there, they may have come from big, different backgrounds. They may be Gentiles and have not known the, the uh, from the Hebrew scriptures or the Hebrew customs or, in the Ten Commandments, and then the, you have the Jews that they were they believed in the Torah and the, the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments, they knew about the prophets, they knew the scriptures, 
uh, from the Old Testament. And he's like, hey, I, you know, I'll, you know, to the ones under the law and became like one under the law. Um, to the ones who are, you know, outside of the law and became the one outside, you know, he's trying to reach them from wherever they're, you know, they're at. You know, okay, you know what? You don't have to know the, the, uh, the, you didn't have to be under all that. Uh, you didn't have to be circumcised, you know. You don't have to be all this. I'm, I'm just going to share with you Christ, uh, or I'll share with you the commandments in Christ. If you receive conviction, then I'll point you to the, the way of salvation, the Lord. Um, but uh, in each way, being able to become all things to all people, and I just think that's really awesome too. It's just like wow, you know, he, he didn't have to, uh, he didn't have to change the message, right? The message is going to be the message no matter what. Uh, he, the, the way it's proclaimed may be a little bit different um, per person, but it's the same message: Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and that's what we need. You know, if He did not die for us and rise from the dead, if He's not who He says He is, we got we got absolutely nothing. Believe it, we have nothing good. So, yeah. so you know, in closing, you know, we appreciate and we understand what. The watch out was trying to say, and we understand when you meet people on the street, you might meet someone where um, they might have a broken and contrite heart. They might need more grace than the law. You might meet someone that's prideful, and you might need to give them more law than grace. So every person has their own situation. So you should um, be kind of filling that person out, see what they know, see what they don't know. And then, you know, adjusting the conversation from there, kind of what the, the article is saying, but there's a lot of hidden lies and, and a lot of hidden deception and a lot of hidden burdens that and yokes that they're putting on people that a lot of people don't know. And a lot of the members aren't, um, looking into. So, you know, as Christians, we go, We'll go to the door and we go out to make disciples. That is our goal. We want to convert yes. you because your soul is on the line and um, you may not have tomorrow. So we don't need to go to a Bible study. We want you know to confess. You confess right here. Let's pray. Let's, you know, if whatever you need to know, let's open up the Bible and we can talk about it right now because tomorrow's not promised. The end of the night's not promised. So, it's, it's a big difference. And, you know, we go by what the Bible says. We are not going by what anyone man-made, no man-made wisdom. We're going by, we want to preach you Christ, and, and that's all. Because that's what's most important. That's what's going to save you. And that is the gospel. You know. So, you know, we do this for you. And we pray that all Jehovah Witnesses and, and even Christians that watch edified. And they... And use this to help these witnesses see the truth and wake up. And I, I think of that scripture, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Like you said, tomorrow is not promised. And the great thing is, Jesus is one with the Father. He is the creator. He is the one everything was made through and for. And mm. in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was... God, not a, a God. He is the creator. He humbled himself. He became a man. He lived the perfect life. He's not. He was not the archangel Michael, but the one who was before the creation of any angel. And he's the one who made all things. And in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. And he is uh, the one that is the only way of redemption. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I and the Father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? And he is, he shed his precious blood. He is the propitiation for our sins, the satisfaction of God's wrath. And not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. He died for us. He rose from the dead on the third day. He is the... There is one uh, God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. And so after making purification for sins, 
uh, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is right at the right hand of the father, the the one who, who uh, God said at the beginning, you know, let us make man in our own image. He can't make can't make uh, man in the image of an angel. Uh, he made God made him uh, made us in His image, but He said, "Let us." God is speaking of the the, the Trinity there, and I just plead with my Jehovah Witness friends, if you're watching, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. He died for us; He rose from the dead, and there is uh, salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. Amen. And um, Amen. we need him. So if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Lord bless you all. Amen. With an honor Amen. Amen. All right, brother. Until next time, we'll, we'll be in contact. Bless you, Been a blessing. Amen. God bless you, brother.